I'm Phil Guyman. I was a pro cyclist for 10 years. Now I'm retired, but I still train as hard as I can to set the best times on the toughest climbs I can find and go on fun adventures on my bike all over the world. This is Worst Retirement Ever. So I made another Everest record attempt uh, that happened. Last time, last time I set the record, um, I lost it before my video was even up. So this time I swore everyone to secrecy. I want the video to be, to be ready. Uh, I'm editing that. In the meantime, I made this little tease to explain to you why it took me so long to, to make the second effort. I initially, I set the record, I think it was, it was in May last year. And then uh, I lost the record immediately. <laughs> the and it kept falling. So I at first I was like, if there's one thing you don't want to do with Everesting, it's do it more often than necessary. Um, to to do a to do a Lachlan last year where he had the he had the measurements wrong and had to do it again a week later. Uh, no thank you. So I I was I was going to wait until the record was sort of established so we sort of see where the where the plateau is um, because it did keep falling. All, all year for the men and the women it had the same thing so in the meantime I was training I was uh, I was just doing big out two days I knew I knew generally what the effort would be I knew uh, you know I've got lots of great hills in Malibu so I just did a lot of hill repeats I did a lot of endurance rides I've been building that up all the last few years I've been focused on KOMs which are like you know five to 20 minute efforts so so I spent really most of 2020 just like putting in the miles putting in the endurance uh, which was good because I couldn't really do KOM videos and travel anyway the other thing is, as I've talked about many times here, um, I was trying to find the right hill. That was that was a crazy search. Um, when I finally found the hill, I hilariously found one in Malibu I've ridden past a thousand times that that I decided would be suitable. Um, by then, it was August in Los Angeles, and I'm not definitely not going for a world record when it's you know 100 degrees every day. I also wanted to get back to to my old race weight. I knew that uh, every every gram would count for something like this on the bike and on the old body. Uh, so I was trying to get back down. I'd, I'd been hovering around 155. Um, I want to get back down to, to more of what my race weight used to be of 150. That took an annoyingly long time. I wanted to do a healthy, um, I started using Noom. That helped a lot. Um, but so now I finally got there. And then once, once I did that, I was like, okay, now, uh, it's, it's the end of the year. It's the, the temperature's better again. Uh, but then I started figuring out, uh, sponsors for this year. And realizing that like a couple little changes here and there, I could get I could get faster stuff. I was going to get different equipment. So it, it was like, all right, I'm going to try it January 3rd. That was my target it was January 3rd. Um, and I was training for that. So when new sponsors means a new bike setup. Uh, so I changed one thing at a time. I try to be smart. I, 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 I paced myself. Um, so first I set up the, the Shimano S-Fire shoes. And, and I went for a ride, you know, I did like a, an easy ride for, you know, one hour, I did an easy ride for two hours, everything was fine. Um, and then the next day I go, I go with Ben, I'm like, all right, we're going to go do, you know, a five hour real slow ride and, and make sure these shoes are okay. Um, and I get down, we get down to the coast, we're kind of at the furthest point, of course, and I mean, my knee starts to hurt and it wasn't super bad, but uh, I'm like, okay, I've got to, I've got to head back. Uh, let's bail on this ride. And it just got worse and worse over the next few miles to where from, from the knee, uh, my, my IT band started, that's, that's like the kind of the thing over here. Um, that got crazy tight to just from, I think trying to like compensate my, my body position, the IT band gets tight. Um, and then I couldn't stand up, uh, at all, which was, uh, so then, then I, then my, my crotch area starts to hurt real bad. Um, that was with the previous saddle. That was kind of part of the reason I was I was happy about changing. To, so fast forward to Topanga Canyon is like if I get up that I just got to coast home. Uh, the KOM for Topanga is like 30 minutes. I think it took me an hour and a half to to get up that. I kept having to stop and stretch myself. Um, I, it was literally this was the worst ride of my life. So the next day I got a massage. Um, I, I just I just asked him to to just completely beat me up in the IT band region. Uh, a massage, a proper massage to to help an injury situation uh, does not feel good. There's no aromatherapy. It's just like someone jamming their elbow into your thigh for a while. But uh, I have found that works. And I kind of I, normally I would just schedule one in anti-COVID times. I would I would just schedule a massage anytime I'm I'm getting new shoes or new whatever. Um, there was also a lot of this to reduce the, the swelling inflammation. 
Um, I, I was using the, the new Firefly gizmo, which, uh, which is basically, it, it kind of simulates compression, but it's uh, much easier. Of course, massage and ice and the Firefly, well that helps, it doesn't actually solve the fit problem. So what I always do when I, when I have bike fit drama, uh, I go see my buddy Jim. Uh, normally Jim's out of the velodrome, we met him last year, but the, uh, now we're out of your garage. Uh, but the whole setup is the same. So what Jim has in his computer, he has how many years of my bike fit data? You know, I was looking at that the other day. I think we go back six or seven years at least. So, so he, he puts these little gizmos everywhere on my hip, uh, everywhere that, that moves. And then Jim has basically can track my pedal stroke via, what is this, lasers? No, uh, it's, it's, no, it's, uh, it's what's called active LED. But. So they're blinking. Can we, we get some lasers see. for next time? Yeah, we, can get lasers. we can get lasers. Um, so we've got Ellie. Basically, he's got my pedal stroke tracked, and uh, and all we do is we move everything around until until it matches again, That's right. and and the problem is solved. Actually, if I were using your avatar on Switch, so people don't know they're dropping me right now. <laughs> That's yeah. right. This is the Shimano Stealth Super Light saddle. Uh, it's it's nice and wide. <laughs> I'm really getting my butt kicked here, and uh, this isn't as good for race, thankfully. But keep in mind, too, I have it set to my weight, so oh, you're going way slower than you would normally well, go. That's what everybody else does on Swift. There you go. Yeah, you're the opposite. So what are we looking at? Okay, so what we have here is we, we have all, all your biomechanics here, what, what your joint angles are doing while you're pedaling. We were really interested uh, in your knee tracking because with the new saddle, uh, the new Shimano saddle, your knees are actually tracking better than with your old saddle. So we're about, uh, we're about half a centimeter better from side to side. This is excellent tracking. As soon as it settles down, we'll get the real number. Um, but yeah, we're, we're below, we're below one mil one centimeter from side to side, which is really hard to do. A lot of people will get to, to 20 millimeters or 15 millimeters, but not that many people will drop below one centimeter or 10 millimeters, where you're usually down around nine or eight, because we're talking right now, you're not concentrating, but yeah. Sorry. So it's an excellent, it's an excellent pedal stroke, yeah. excellent knee tracking, so that's what we're after. So, the, so first, the, the shoes, it turned out the shoes had a, a different stack height than my previous shoes, so it effectively changed my saddle height, which I, didn't I wasn't prepared for that. That was, that was one of the problems. Um, but really, that was the only problem, and then we just adapted the saddle into the new fit. That's correct. So we found that, that with the new shoes, they have a lower stack height than the, than the older shoes, and so effectively raising his saddle height for the most part. So once we lowered that down and got his knee angle to the angle we know works for him, his knee pain went away. And then with the new saddle, his knee is tracking much, much better than with the old saddle. About a half centimeter better, which for him, he already had great lateral movement of his knee, and now it's just that much better. So the, uh, how much on a scale of the, the people that you see, how much of a princess am I as far as how crippled I was from a couple millimeters? Well, it, it, it's a good example of, of how my world is a world of millimeters, right? And so for you, there was only a few millimeters off, but it made all the difference for you, especially because of the type of power you put out when you're climbing. Small changes can have huge implications for you and did. Yeah, and that's right. why that pain crept in and stayed for a few days. Once we took care of it, you were fine. But it's a great example of how it's not centimeters, it's not inches, it's millimeters that matter wow. to us. So I had this video ready uh, as a tease to throw up to let you know when it was done. Um, I've got a bike feature coming real soon. I had I want to show you what I did to my bike to set that up. So that's also, um, that's almost ready to post. Uh, and by then I'll have the Everesting thing as well. So uh, did I get it? Did I not? Maybe you can interpret it from, from my eyes. No? Well, we'll see. Um, keep an eye out. Video's coming soon. See ya.